Well, hello, hello, hello. It's such a pleasure to have Mr. Enti Lawyer in the house again. Thanks for coming, Enti. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Paula. I have missed you because I have been busy on Fridays and haven't been able to do a royal mess. So I haven't oh, seen Ron yeah. and Ron sends me an email every week and I feel bad and I'm just like, Ugh. and I know that I can't do it next Friday, but I just had to find the time to to come talk to you so we could talk about some <laughs> some royal stuff. <laughs> Thanks so much. Ron is like a girl, you know, he feels hurt. If, <laughs> if you, <laughs> you think it's a woman, you know, it's just he gets his feelings hurt because he likes his little mates, you know, he likes to, you know, he's my mate. I, I love you. Ron, you know, and, 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 you know, I saw his, uh, like his red room thing and I haven't got back to him about watching it or whatever. And so I just, you know, I don't want him to, to feel hurt. So no, pass no, that no. Along. I'll, I'll tell him, I'll tell him. He was really happy you responded to him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a little kid. I swear to God, you know, he's, and I like him very much, but yes. So we're here to talk about so many things and so many things i was crying did a live yesterday i was crying because princess catherine came out and said that she had cancer she said that um, um and you know what really angered me the most as soon as she hmm. finished saying i want privacy and i hope you let me heal immediately anderson cooper goes <laughs> on cnn she doesn't have cancer with a doctor saying well with all due respect to the princess um it's find it very odd that that's how she found out she had cancer and i'm like dude I'm a woman. I had tumors in my ovaries, you know, and they had to remove them. And at the time they removed them, they didn't know if they were cancerous or not because they have to do a biopsy. And then you later find out, you know, you know, when you're relieved that you, everything, you know, was just a tumor, a benign tumor. But it's yeah, incredible. I mean, what do you make of all of this? Well, you know, just to go to your point for a second, you know, like Olivia Munn just said that she had a double mastectomy and that you know, her doctor first took a look at her, said, oh, you know, your score is not really high enough, so we don't think that you have it. But let's take a look. And they looked again and they looked again and then they found out, oh, my gosh, you know, your your score is high enough. And then sure enough. So you, it, it's entirely possible. Now, one of the, the issues is that like on um, I think it was third. Well, th I know it was Thursday. So Thursday I had done this interview that I do every single week with a Canadian radio station and. You know, obviously we're talking about Kate. She hadn't, we didn't have a cancer diagnosis or anything like that. And so it was all speculation. They were talking about, you know, all the videos and the pictures and stuff. And then yesterday, obviously the, the cancer news. And then as soon as, you know, it happened, then people said, oh, it's a deep fake video. And I I'm saw just, that. I almost threw up. I just like, I have been, this, this is how I've been since the only time that I ever questioned any photo was the very first one when she's with her mom just because it's so grainy and she looked kind of puffy and everything. And I just, it didn't really, to me, it didn't really look like her, but again, it was taken from a long distance away. She's wearing sunglasses. It's very difficult to tell. Um, and the only other kind of speculation that I engaged in was when Prince William had to make his, you know, when he couldn't make the, the, the to memorial the, the Constantine, for Constantine. Yeah. And because he was supposed to read and everything, and it was literally, you know, he, you can throw a stone from where he lives to where he had to be, and it wasn't a very long commitment. And then, every, you know, I engaged in a round of speculation that it might have involved Thomas Kingston or something like that, because don't forget, Thomas Kingston died at about the same time, killed yeah. himself and everything, and who had previously dated Pippa. And so I, I just, you know, that's basically the only kind of speculation. I have been, you know, a firm believer that... Kate, like especially the video and other things that it was Kate and and the video at the Chris and not the Christmas market, but everybody said Christmas because of the Christmas lights, but at the 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 farmers kind of market is that whenever you normally see Kate, you see her front and center. She's wearing some kind of hat and puffy stuff and regalia. But I, I reminded people, I said, look, if you see her whenever she's at an athletic event where she has to get into like leggings or something like that, or a wetsuit, she's a very thin person. Absolutely. And, and so when you see her in an outfit, like she was wearing with William, then I think to myself, okay, you know, that looks like her. She looks even, you know, more thin than normal, which would make sense. And then when I, and here's what I thought about like the video and stuff, I'm pretty convinced that she might be wearing a wig. And so because of the chemo, maybe, I don't know how quickly you lose your hair. It starts, you know, so she could be wearing not a wig. Quickly, not, not that quickly because she says she's just starting it. If, if, and depends on what kind of chemo and that, that could take a couple, like um two months or so okay. for the chemo to run through your body. Yeah. See, I, I don't know enough about it and, and how she would, you know, to do it. But 
I to me, she looked like Kate, especially when they were walking. It was the same laugh and everything like that. The same and walk when, too. Yeah, the same walk, the same gait. And when the the Kate lookalike said, "Hey, I was at my other job. It's not me." And here's the thing: is the Kate lookalike? She knows exactly every mannerism of Kate. She spent you know hours, hundreds of hours of looking at photos and videos and things like that. This is probably the person who would know what Kate looks like more than any person on earth other than, you know, her family members. And she's like, I'm 100 percent convinced it's her. And, you know, that was it's always been good enough for me. Um, I wish and this is something that I alluded to today. I wish in my heart of hearts that um, that she hadn't told anybody, which she didn't. But I wish that somehow she had told Harry and Megan, but nobody else. Like nobody else. Oh yes, to see if they leak it, right? Yes, right. I just, I, I, looking back, I wish that, you know, she's not that devious. You know, she, she's not going to do something like that. But in my heart of hearts, I wish that she hadn't told anybody except for Megan and Harry, and that if it got leaked, then we go, okay, there we go. So I kind of wish that she had said, done that. But. You know, they did uh, that thing with Omid Scobie, what he did, right? And then he posted the alarm. You know, I don't understand how Omid Scobie found out that there were going to be news at 6 p.m. Because, you know, there was a notice with embargo thing with the speech for uh, Princess Catherine, right? And apparently he posted on his ex account an alarm thing at 6 p.m. So he was roasted by people. How dare you? And then he posted another thing saying, oh, you're trashing me. You know, it's like um, they kind of knew that something was going to drop at 6 p.m., but it was embargo. Apparently he didn't get the entire thing because he didn't know. And neither did Meghan and Harry. Well, don't forget, like, wasn't there something like the... Was it the day before or two days before? And there, there's, oh, there's going to be a big announcement. There's going to be a big announcement and nothing ever came. No, and no, I no. Think that's that's... Because they, they, they sent the form, the, the, the notice on Wednesday to all the radio stations embargo to re talk about it until fr on Friday the 22nd Friday. at 6 p.m. So they knew that some news were coming because somebody leaked it. There was something. And then don't forget that also this past week we had you know, Russia saying, oh, King Charles has died and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, them trying to, I guess, maybe predict what the announcement was going to be. I I found it, um, I think that the palace, you know, didn't exactly, maybe not even the palace, but there's been, it should have just, this should have been enough where Kate had surgery. She, you'll see her again after Easter. That should but have been enough. That. They did that. No, I know they did that. And that should have been enough. But for whatever reason, it's just like, I don't know if it was Kate that was caught up in it just or the palace was freaking out because Queen Elizabeth's not there and King Charles is dealing with his own cancer and stuff. And they're just like, well, we should do something. We should do something. And then somebody gave in. And then Kate obviously had the, the Mother's Day photo. Um, and I don't blame her. Right. I, I don't blame her for, for doing that. If that was, you know, she's just like, fine just we'll give these people a photo of me and whatever. And here's the kids and everything's hunky dory. And, you know, I, I don't know whose fault that was, but again, I don't think that they should have done that. I think that they should have just, here's the picture of me in the car with my mom. Here's the picture of me in the car with William, you know, and here's somebody got the, the video of us at the market and that should have been plenty and I think that somebody just didn't know how to respond to something like Queen Elizabeth would have never. She would have just said, screw everybody. You know, you come back when you want to come back. You don't have to release any pictures. I don't care what people say, I, you know, and she just would have said, eh. but since she's gone, I think that people are just kind of. What do we do? What do we do? What do we owe them? What, you know, and it just kind of got you know out of here. You know what it is, You know what it is, though, that people had huge respect for her late majesty. Nobody would have ever dared be so disrespectful. But with Charles, nobody really respects him because, you know, and he didn't say anything. I remember in 1981 when Princess Diana was pregnant with William and these paps were chasing her up and down. And the queen ordered her private secretary to summon the, the directors of the newspapers, you know, and said, you know, and told them, listen, Leave this lady alone. If you know she's pregnant, what you're doing is causing her stress. Charles hasn't done anything like that. He's left her to dry. That's just my opinion, clearly. But you know, he's been so consumed with this, and 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 you know, he could have issued a statement, but nobody respects him because look at 
Queen Elizabeth. We all saw her get frailer, you know, more frail with time. Nobody dared say anything, you know, because they had respect for her. But it, I find that there's like a lack of respect. It's like Charles is not there. You know, it's like there's nobody at the helm. Don't you get that feeling? Yeah, I totally get that feeling. And then <clears throat> I think the last time I was in a Royal Mass, we even talked about like Camilla taking a break, you know, okay, everybody cannot take breaks. And then, you know, and Edward who had been taking a break or withdrawing and all of a sudden he has to come back and, and do it. It feels like it is a ship without a rudder, that there is nobody actually in charge. Absolutely. And with, Absolutely. And with Queen you know Elizabeth, what? you knew who was in charge. She was in charge, you know, whatever. It's just like, you are not going to say these things about anybody, you know, in my family. And, you know, it's just, okay, let's, let's think, oh, with Prince Philip and an affair rumor, you know, it's just going to get shut down by Queen Elizabeth. People in the U S could talk about it or something if they wanted to, but nobody in England is going to talk about it. And, you know, let's go back to it's when Kate, when the, the topless photos or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and how Queen Elizabeth handled that, you know, she calls up who, you know, the prime minister in France or whatever, and says, you know, this has got to go all these photos. It just like, boom, just the hammer from Queen Elizabeth. And Charles, you just you feel like maybe he doesn't quite have that. He wants to be liked, so he doesn't want to upset mm -hmm. anybody. Right. You and know? Queen Elizabeth didn't care if anybody liked her. No, she wanted to do what's right. You know, Auntie, I always find that if you do what's right, no matter how unpopular it is, in the long run, people will respect you more for it, you know? And he doesn't have that. He wants to be like, and, you know, I wanted to ask you something because Stephen Colbert made, you know, he's under a lot of stress and, and, and you know, a lot of people ask me, do you still believe that he, that William cheated on, on Catherine, had an affair with a, a Rose? You know, that Rose has served um, Stephen Colbert. I yeah, Colbert with a legal notice. Yeah. Yes. What does that mean? Do you still think that that, that he had an affair with her? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of smoke there, but here's here's where I would say no, is that because Rose has been at a lot of events since then and with Kate, right? Where they're smiling and laughing and stuff. And I just don't think that you know, she would have done that. What is interesting is that this renewed interest for in, in the affair is odd because this is something that we were talking about a couple of years ago. This is not something that, you know, we've been talking about in the last six months or anything like that, but it's also brought a lot of negative attention onto to Rose's in-laws um, because of all the, everybody's going back and they're looking at the, the photos of um, like all this Chinese furniture and, and antiquities and stuff like that. And if you go look at Chinese social media, you know, their version of Instagram, their version of TikTok, it's just everybody is just saying the Sassoon family, which is what her, her family is descended from. You know, they made their fortune basically dealing drugs in China and stealing stuff from China. And, the, you know, the, the Victoria and Albert Museum has a lot of their stuff um, in the museum and everything like that. And it's just kind of brought all this attention. Now, she did not just send a letter to Stephen Colbert. If you look at the statement from her, and there's been varying statements, but the, the gist of it is that they sent a legal notice to several outlets, not just Stephen Colbert. Um, and I think that she's just saying, hey, there, there's nothing to any of this. Um, <clears throat> I do, do you wonder think spreading the rumors though who do, because you know I don't know if you know this but the the rumors apparently started uh, at the end of 2017 hey this is Harry I don't know if you can see the picture that's Harry with Rose Hansberry yep. um that's at his first state dinner the only one he's ever been to and it was actually funny enough to host King Felipe who was there with his skanky wife <laughs> uh, you know I mean that woman I mean uh, Megan uh, but um so Meghan Markle was not invited and she was furious because, you know, um, she figured that she should have been there. And I remember all over the news that this pictures of Harry sitting with Rose, walking with Rose, um, everything. I mean, and, and I remember the rumors started almost right after. And I remember Shalon Lester saying that, you know, before in the United States, you couldn't get anything. This lady's name would have never been on anybody's mouth. But as soon as Meghan hit the royal family or infiltrated the royal family, you got all these kind of wild rumors. I mean, what do you make of that? Do you think Meghan Markle camp is behind all of this? I wouldn't say that they're necessarily <clears throat> behind it, but I wouldn't say, 
that, you know, there's somebody, oh, you know, if somebody goes to somebody on her staff and, oh, what do you think about like this? Well, I think that they had an affair or whatever. I just find it very interesting that it all decided to come back out. Like I said, we've already talked about this. We've already, you know, cycled through th this thing. And since then, um, there's been tons of pictures. You know, there's a picture of Kate and Rose kissing on the cheeks and, and whatever. And they both look very happy to see each other. And... Uh, and, you know, just talking on their own, you know, with nobody there, it's not forced. They're like walking off by themselves and stuff. So I just find I don't think that Kate would be the kind of person who would be, you know, she's willing to suck up a lot of things for the monarchy. Um, but I think it was everybody was just expe expecting the worst in like they are all assuming that, um, oh, it's Rose and like. Rose's kids are not really her kids. They're William's kids and and they're older than than William's, you know, kids with Kate. So are they the ones who would, you know, ascend to the throne, but are they illegitimate and and all of this kind of stuff. And it was just they they just they took it too far because they just didn't understand why why Kate wasn't around. But the palace said she'll be back after Easter. We're not at Easter yet. Yeah, this is the thing that you're talking about. For example, the Princess of Raves, Kate Middleton secretly went to upper class 24 hour music festival at Norfolk State of her friend Rose Hanbury, the Marchioness of Chumley, after being persuaded by friends at dinner party. This was August 2023. And they're seeing there, you know, like with her there, you know, you can see they're together there. Yeah. They're th here, this is the, the party that they went to, you know, and they had good dinner and they left a huge tip, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and I just I think that they're friends and I, I, I just I, I don't think that. OK, a lot of people were comparing this and I think wrongfully so is that, you know, I have all my theories and I've always talked about, let's say, Princess Charlene in Monaco. Right. Oh, yeah. And I feel like and that she's yeah, always I trying. I feel like she's always trying to escape. And she got away for like nine months, gets talked into coming back. And they have all these kind of cover stories. Oh, she was having treatment. Oh, then she couldn't get on a plane or whatever because of what was going on with her inner ear or something like that. And she didn't want to take a ship. And, you know, it's just all these more crazy stories. And then you have like um, <clears throat> Albert's former lover, who is also the father to, to one of his children, um, the former flight attendant. I can't remember her name. But like then all of a sudden she's like attending royal functions and then all of a sudden Charlene said, OK, well, I'll start going back to the royal functions and stuff instead of having this person because it's going to bring attention to the fact that, you know, he had this baby out of wedlock and stuff. I just think that people were thinking, OK, well, this is similar. You know, Kate's in hiding, wants to escape. And I never got that sense. I think that when you talked earlier, you said that Charles hasn't really done anything for her. And I think also he really threw her under the bus or somebody at the palace. OK, it doesn't have to be Charles. And it probably was inadvertent. However, when the whole Mother's Day photo came out, you know, somebody else could have fallen on their sword for Kate instead of her saying, you know, I like to edit photos and mess around with photos and stuff like that, you know, and, you know, she signs it um, C and, you know, somebody else could have said that had taken the picture other than her. I don't understand why they made her do that. I, I thought that that was really kind of rotten. They could have just made up the name of a staffer at, at Kensington Palace and nobody would have, you know, so and so it's like this intern is working at the palace and he, you know, he or she is the one who did it instead of making Kate be the one. Why? You know, they said up well, from what I heard, she didn't want to, because she knew there was, was going to create such a, big blow up in many ways she didn't want to harm because she knows that if they said this an intern people would have you know the sleuths would have gone after them because of how much of a hot topic it is kind of thing you know so she just she i guess you know what it is i think and this is like you said it's a mistake that they have pandered to public uh pressure they have succumbed to public pressure like you know and now all of those people are backtracking. Pierce Morgan even went on TMZ and now he's the loudest one saying, oh, you guys are terrible. He even did a video that says maybe Harry and Meghan were right, you know, <laughs> and, I, and, he's not, and Kim Kardashian off to find Kate, you know, uh, and then uh, I think that the actually with the Kim Kardashian one, I just I thought that was funny. 
Um, I didn't see that as disrespectful at all. Um, and I'm the first one to take a shot at Kim Kardashian. I just thought that, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm off to find Kate. And 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 I think that in that sense, that was kind of lighthearted. I, I but you're right with Piers Morgan, you know, changing and oh, you know, maybe Harry and Megan are right. And I, I've noticed a lot of people are just, hey, well, let's focus on Harry and Meghan and let's talk about their doctored photos. Let's talk about their missing kids. Exactly. Let's talk about all this kind of stuff. And because we've been so focused on where's Kate that um, <clears throat> we haven't spent any time talking about Harry and Meghan. The only thing that's broken through about Harry and Meghan is this full onslaught of publicity about, you know, American Riviera Orchard and cooking programs and stuff like that. And I don't know, but yeah, at the same really, time, Megan has really seized this time. I mean, but the, I mean, two things, Antia, that I wanted to ask you. Um, first off, she hasn't traded trademark that name, right? And number two, it's not going that great, is it? Because she hasn't been able to get to even six hundred thousand subscribe followers on Instagram, and half well, of them, if you run it through Inbeat, one of the many applications that shows you how many accounts. How many of those accounts are active or inactive? Over, she has fifty-one point something percent are inactive accounts. Yeah, it's a pretty stupid name. Um, I just, it's not, it's, it's not catchy. It's hard to remember. It's very long. Um, you know, an ARO doesn't really. You know, I was. Just, if you think about like some successful. Um, you know, product lines from celebrities or something, whether it's like Kim Kardashian going back to her with like skims. Okay. It's very, you know, that kind of thing. The Jenners are very good at coming up with catchy names um, or just like color pop, which is, you know, a lot of celebrities, you know, use and stuff. And it's just, the names need to be able to roll off your tongue goop, um, which doesn't yeah, sound like, very good. What's the name good. of that Kardashian poof? What is it called? Yeah, I mean, that's not one of their better choices, but I'm just saying well, Goop's not a great choice, but the thing is, is that it kind of works because it's Gwyneth Paltrow and you're throwing two O's in it. So, you know, it kind of, it it, it worked. I would probably would not have suggested that name um, to Gwyneth, but, you know, it's easily rememberable. Other, you know, American Riviera Orchard, how many people even know that Montecito is America's Riviera? Um, you know, not very many. I just, I think that she's, I honestly, if I was Meghan Markle, I would have just stuck with the TIG. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Why didn't she just relaunch the TIG? I don't know. Maybe because then it's not, that's who she was prior to all of this. And she wanted to make a fresh start and didn't want people going back and remembering the stuff that happened prior. So she came up with some kind of new lifestyle brand. But, you know, if you think about somebody like Martha Stewart, she, Martha Stewart living at, or, you know, it's just Martha Stewart. She's just using her name. Yeah. Um, and I think that maybe Megan could have used her name rather than. No, American. because she doesn't want to. She wants to be the Duchess of Sussex. And I, I think that she has some limitations with that. <laughs> yeah, because she, you know, feels like, hey, yeah, I'm the Duchess of Sussex, but I can't use that name. And in a commercial I, manner. So I just, I, I and I, here's. The, I'm reminded when I heard, oh, there's going to be a cooking program and I'm just, okay, here's my, here's my thoughts on that. <laughs> when I look at Gwyneth Paltrow and cooking, do I think that she has a lot of help? Yes. Do I think that she understands the recipes and the, what she's looking for in food? Yes. Do I think that, um, I compare this more like to a Brooklyn Beckham who had like 50 or 60 people helping him to make an egg I don't think that Meghan Markle has cooked for herself or her family in seven years. I don't think that she ever really did cook that much to begin with. I, I just, I feel like, you know, she's going to, she wants to sell all these things related to cooking and stuff. I think that she feels like there's a, a niche for her here um, that she can take over from Gwyneth Paltrow, that she can be a, um, kind of like a, not a descendant, but take on like the Martha Stewart kind of tree a little in bit. In a royal way. In a royal way. And in, I don't think it's any kind of coincidence that we had, you know, Sussex.com right before we had <clears throat> American Riviera Orchard. So that way people could say, oh, okay, look, this is a whole rebranding. Let's, <clears throat> we're reminded that she's the Duchess of Sussex and oh, and now she's got this new kind of lifestyle company. 
I just don't see it going anywhere. And like you said, however many followers she had, how many are bots, it's one thing to get followers. It is another thing to get people to click. And think about when I mean, we do a thing. royal. You mess. know, she has all the all the subscribe all the likes. If you go look, very few. Yeah, she, I mean they're all hidden. The numbers are hidden, which is a, a bad thing for a brand because you know people want to know how popular you are. I have, um, you know, there are people. <sighs> Okay, let's look at it a couple different ways. So let's say when we're on a royal mess and think about how often Ron or you or whatever says, oh, hit the like and subscribe button and stuff like that. Hit the follow, hit the notification, the things time. like that, right? All the time. <laughs> and I have I have a friend and I'm not going to say her name, but she's got tens of millions of followers mm. on Instagram. And she honestly couldn't get anybody to click through on anything, probably, because that's not why they go to her Instagram. But if you go to somebody um, like, and nobody is going to know she has this so many name, but, followers and, <laughs> and I get people to click through things. Um, because they, they, if you have something that's designed, okay, we want to look at Megan's life, let's say. We want to look at her photos. We want to see, you know, where she's at. We, but, okay, we, but they don't like, they don't, okay, okay. It's like a lot of people watch her, her thing, but nobody really clicks on it or follows. Yeah. Right. But if you look at somebody like Kylie Jenner, when she came out with her version, which was essentially just ColourPop, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so ColourPop was, you know, it would sell for like $5, but because she'll put her name on it and all of a sudden, you know, she can sell it for $25, but you saw that she had the power to get people to actually buy things. They said, oh my gosh, I want this. I like the way it looks on her. Let me go ahead and click. And you have very devoted fans. You know, there are certain people out there that can get people to click and to get people to click through. And there's some people, they just like, oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, look at that picture of Megan. And then when she goes, I'd like you to buy my aprons, they go, but why? You know, why would I want to buy one of your aprons? It's different if you have like Martha Stewart, who has this long established brand. And she goes, this is the kind of dishware that I like. This is the kind of stuff that I like to cook with or whatever. Um, you know, here's where you can get it and stuff like that. It's just just because somebody has a lot of followers doesn't mean there's going to be a lot of clicks. And, you know, there are people that can. There's a, an example that nobody's going to know, but her name's Daniel Bregoli, um, also known as Bad Barbie. And, you know, she for whatever reason, when she started, you know, going online and having products, and this is not her only fans, but just products, people would click through on that stuff like crazy because the people, you know, were devoted to her and were willing to do things. And I don't think that's going to be the same for Meghan Markle. <laughs> no, but I am shocked. I am shocked that, you know, because, you know, remember when they launched Sussex Royal on Instagram, 8 million or something like that. What happened to those 8 million following her over to American Orchard? You know, and now, you know, after you you run her account through those apps, it shows that she had, I think she's at 561 or 62,000 right now. She has 380,000 inactive accounts. That yeah. can't be good, can it? No, you, you know, I get offered all the time, like on my Instagram, you know, and the request, oh, do you want to buy 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 followers and stuff like that? And you can also tell there's an example of... um a recent one, like Priyanka Chopra, um, yeah. you can tell that she has bought a bunch of followers and stuff. Yeah. And they're in the pretty messages... high on that ranking. Sorry about that. She's pretty high on the ranking of inactive accounts. You know that? Oh, I didn't know that, but it doesn't surprise me because if you look at the replies and stuff, there's you can tell it's written by AI. And you can tell that it's also just like there'll be an emoji and whatever. And the emojis don't make any sense compared to what the post was. And she has 62% inactive accounts. See, there you go. I mean, I've never been one to, if you want to buy accounts for clout, let's say, so you can just say, I have millions of followers. That's one thing. Um, but if you think that you're going to convince people, you know, oh, I've got 5 million followers, so you should buy what I say to buy. That's a completely different kind of, you know, thing for somebody like, you know, myself who with the website and, you know, you know, people clicking through or viewing and stuff like that, you know, you look at click through rates and, you know, it's very difficult, which is why so many media companies are going out of business because, hey, we're coming to your site to read stuff. We don't necessarily want to buy something off your site. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. That's you know that's absolutely true, Auntie. And I wanted to ask you something. A couple of things. They they they, um, 
a friend of mine who lives in Westwood, um, in California, she has seen Harry a couple of times at a bar with a very busty blonde. Do you know anything about that? I had a blind about Harry and um, a surfing instructor. Um, and who, but this surfing instructor, I, I don't know if they've ever been down to Westwood together or anything like that. This surfing instructor is in Carpinteria, which is right next to Montecito and um, over at Padero Beach. And, you know, I, and I have seen, you know, I've heard that he has been with this surfer a couple of times. I don't know. She gives lessons. I don't know if it's under the guise of that. Um, but I haven't heard about him in Westwood with anybody. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but it's also a strange, you know, Westwood is where UCLA is. So is, is it a UCLA student that he's hanging out with? It's just... No, 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 no. It's, it's not okay. really. It's like Beverly Hills area. You know, okay. like uh, around the Beverly Hills Hotel is around. You know, it's all around that area. I don't want to say the area exactly because I don't want people <laughs> to know what I'm talking about. You know, because this is something I got and. um Actually, um, I got a picture sent and this is not deep fake or anything. And, and, you know, and I, I did a video about it. I haven't shown the picture yet, but it's so funny because immediately the sugar started saying, oh, I'm sure they were there for business. That didn't look <laughs> like a, like a business, business outfit to me. And, you know, unless he was deep looking for a file on her cleavage, you know, like I, I don't, uh, I don't even know how that could be, but it's, um, do you think, I mean, because you've seen them now and the, like they're become this lovey dovey thing. Isn't it amazing that uh, the, the rumors about William being unfaithful have been all over the place? Well, Megan and Harry pretend to be more loved up than ever. Like they went to Texas and uh, Megan looking at Harry lovingly, you know, and then, you know, like they've been everywhere together, you know, they're this love story. And then they did this thing at the Kinsey Museum or something like that. What the hell was that about? I think that the whole Texas trip really just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, except for one part, and I've said this, I think that even though there was some word salad and some <clears throat> misconceptions and mistruths mistru about some of it, I do appreciate that they went to Evaldi, even though I know that it was, you know, for the cameras and stuff, but I just feel like anything that you can do for those families, whether or not it's real or whatever, or bring attention to it and give them some kind of, you know, comfort or whatever, I'm okay with that. Um, but the whole loved up thing, you know, if you think about it, like the first we, and, and I think the reason that Harry went was because we discovered that Megan basically bought the spot on South by Southwest, right? They're the ones who paid for it. She and her partner had to pay for, you know, Brooke Shields to be there and stuff like that. So, so if Harry's there and then don't forget the first loved up sighting we had was at Soho house, but Nobody can take pictures yeah. of Soho House, so we don't really know. And that kind of gets back to the whole L.A. thing is that, you know, Harry's a member at San Vicente Bungalows. And, yeah. you know, they are probably the most strict about photos and they will kick anybody out. They'll kick people out if they suspect that you're talking about anybody that has been there. So I would just assume that Harry would do any kind of business that he wanted to do with anybody with a lot of cleavage at a place like San Vicente Bungalows rather than at a bar where he is going to be spotted and you can, you know, take a picture and make it look like however you want it to, to look. I just. Yeah, but Harry's stupid. He is stupid, you know, but. <laughs> Harry's stupid. Harry's stupid. You know, and you know what the problem with him is? Actually, this was a place that's exclusive. Okay. It is a very exclusive place. And actually, it wasn't a picture taken with a phone. It was, a, you know, that they have security cameras there. Um, okay. So, yeah. Well, that so, would make a whole different kind of ball game because I can't, if you're telling me security cameras, then I'm going, okay, then I'm, I'm good with that because I, I just, I can't, you know, I can't imagine him letting himself be caught. And the thing about like the surfer in Carpinteria is that they're having, you know, where they're taking like the, these lessons or whatever, is further removed and it's not a very crowded beach. You know, you have to realize that it's, there's even sections of it that are entirely private. You know, they call yeah. it billionaires row. It is a public street um, down the, the middle of all these billionaires houses. Well, not even down the middle because it's only on the beach side that there's houses on the opposite side is actually a train track. 
And so what you can do, though, is you can go to somebody's house or whatever and have a lesson and it would basically be on a private beach. And there's no way that you're ever going to get photograph of Harry with somebody unless somebody's in a boat and there's not very many boats over there. So you're not going to have you know, it's a it's a place that you can be extremely private and know that you can be out in public and still not get your photo taken because it would be extremely difficult to get your photo taken there. But I know that this surfer from this Carpinteria surf shop or whatever has been giving lessons to him, you know, and I don't they know are male <clears throat> teachers. You know that, right? Which I know, but I know I'm just saying this particular instructor is female. And she's very pretty. She's very, very pretty. And she's actually Harry's type. Does she look like he Chelsea? Has a type. Yeah. <laughs> he has a type. Yeah, the, yeah. He the has Chelsea a type. Davis type. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's poor. So this is going to be interesting because, um, yeah. But, but, I mean, and another thing, why does Megan take him now everywhere? She took him to that Kinsey Museum, which are Kinsey activity for, for Black, you know, culture. She's never felt Black. So why is she taking Harry? Harry's the confirmed racist in the royal family. Um, and why would she need to take him, an empowered woman, to that activity? I mean, he looks so bored out of his mind. Well, he all he often looks bored, concerts and stuff and things like that. It's I think that she took him just for what you had said maybe 20 minutes ago, is that all the rumors of Prince William you know, cheating on Kate and all this kind of stuff. And, oh, look, we have a very loving relationship. And like you said, all the sightings have been, oh, look, they're on date night. Oh, look, they're holding hands. Oh, look, they're doing this. But all anybody has to look at, and I'll give you a very up-to-date contemporary celebrity example that everybody can identify with because everybody's seen all the photos. And that is Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, right? Oh, yes. so, so you'll have Jennifer Garner and Ben Affleck at a game or something or Disneyland. No, Lopez, Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez. No, but Jennifer Garner. So you'll have Jennifer Garner and Ben Affleck laughing together and all this kind of stuff. And so the next thing you know, Jennifer Lopez says, okay, we're going to go on a public and you're going to hold my hand in public, which he never does. And, you know, and he just always looks miserable. He always looks like he would rather be anywhere else. And when then, you know, you contrast that with the, the Jennifer Garner photos and, you know, and then now they're going to work together on a movie. And Matt Damon's going to work on it, and and he Matt Jennifer Damon Garner would, with with Jennifer Garner with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Yes, <laughs> I can guarantee you, Jennifer Lopez is going to be on that film every every second. Oh my God, empty. But the reason Matt wouldn't do it with Jennifer Lopez is because he doesn't like Jennifer Lopez. But you know, it's just it's very catty, and it's you know these things are very programmed and you know megan's taking the same kind of hollywood lessons i'm going to you know show this and and but the other thing that's really interesting to me is that people magazine had kind of taken a step back taken a step back from from megan and harry and megan and harry were having to rely like on us weekly and stuff to to get their message out and i, I don't know if megan with us weekly yeah and i don't know if megan came into more money or convinced harry to part with some you know, because it has been a full court press in People Magazine um, ever since, you know, Sussex.com and then the whole. Yeah, and many, um, in many other magazines as well. Home and Country, Vogue, British yeah. Vogue. Yeah, it's just it's it's an overwhelming amount of publicity. And that doesn't come cheap because, you know, whatever publicist you're hiring. OK, well, I got, you know, some publicists work for. There's a lot of different arrangements. You know, the most common, if you're not super wealthy or whatever, is you'll just have a publicist for like if you have a movie coming out or a show coming out, you'll have a publicist, you know, for a couple of months or for a project on a per project basis. Sometimes very, very rarely they'll get a if they're full time, they'll get a percentage of your income like a lawyer would or an agent or a manager. Um, but most of the time you just pay them a monthly retainer and, you know, 5,000, 10,000, and they're just always try and get you in stuff. Sometimes they'll work on a per placement thing. Oh, well, I'll get you in people magazine 10 times this month for $15,000 or $20,000 or something like that. So there's all kinds of different things, but she had not been doing that for many, many months. And then all of a sudden it's just boom, 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 you know, and let's spend the money on South by Southwest and boom, boom. It's just like to put her in front of us. In a way, it's been kind of a backfire for her in the sense that the entire world has been focused on Kate. 
right? <laughs> Who has been away, invisible. <laughs> exactly. She's been totally invisible. So this, you know, so, you, you know, we might talk about American Riviera Orchard for a minute, like the general public. I'm not talking about the people who, you know, follow, you know, your channel or um, other royal yeah. channels or whatever. But they'll take a minute to talk about American Riviera Orchard and what a thirst grab it is. But then they'll spend the next 80 percent of the time talking about Kate. Right. And what and so Megan is kind of getting her message is getting lost in the void. And it's just. Is that why I, she issued this statement as soon as Catherine, uh, the Princess of Wales, um, spoke and said and get, told the world that she had cancer? Is that why she released? Because now if you look, I kid you not. NT. You Google Meghan Markle statement immediately, pretty much every major magazine. Harry and Meghan issue statement uh, on Cat, uh, Catherine's. Uh, so they're linked by the algorithm now to, to that. Yeah. And I think, I think part of that though, is that everybody's desperate for, you know, Catherine news. And so every publication wanted to say something. If Harry and Meghan made a statement, I don't think that there's anything like they knew that if they gave a statement that it would be front and center and everybody would pick it up. But I don't think that they actually um, paid anybody. I think that they just knew, Hey, we can make a statement and it could be a dumb statement. Like theirs is, um, you know, one or two lines long and everybody will pick it up because they need content. They need to fill the, you know, the Kate Middleton content train because it's been very speaking of clicks, you know, for the past two months, you know, if you talk about Kate Middleton and where she is, you can make a lot of money, you know, because people are really, really interested in it. It is entered the zeitgeist. I never, I never, I never talked about it. You know, I did one video about it, wondering where she was, and I wondering, you know, not where she was, but her health and that, you know, that I hope she was well. Um, but, but it's you, you are right in many ways. Now, I wanted to ask you something because a lot of people have asked me to ask you this. The, um, you know that I don't know if you know. Well, you probably don't know because you're busy. But Pedina interviewed Kirby Summers. I don't know if you know her. Yeah, I know Kirby. Okay, she interviewed with Kidina, and she was saying that she's absolutely convinced that Meghan Markle had knew Epstein, and she knew, um, uh, what's it called, Andrew, very well, and Harvey Weinstein as well, because she presented so many connections. She even placed Meghan at that yacht in Thailand in 2002, but said that it's too bad that there's no pictures of it, you know, and... And, and then you posted a uh, blind item about Harvey laughing about the wedding between Meghan and Harry. No, I think that whenever, and, you know, Kirby always, you know, I, I got her sub stack and, you know, she's always like on top of everything and, and takes things to like things that I hadn't even thought about before. <laughs> and, um, and I've been on, on Kirby's podcast and she's been on mine and, you know, Kirby has, it, Kirby's lived it right so yeah. it, she was around that time period and she knows all these players and everything so I think that whenever you start talking about Soho House and you yeah. start talking about all the connections between Soho House and Epstein I, I can't in my mind and I'll have to listen to, to Kirby's you know thought process on it I'm not sure that I can figure out a way to get Megan and Epstein necessarily together I can get Megan and Harvey together. I could get I could get Megan and Andrew together, maybe, but I'm I'm because Andrew's got a huge history with Soho House. I'm just looking at the time period and the and the I'll tell you what she said. She said like um that she because the video that she did with Pedina was the very extreme links between Megan and Epstein. And there's a particular girl um from um that Megan Markle was on a yacht with. Uh, that was uh, one of uh, Epstein's victims, right? Um, yes. And and she was like, she's on the yacht there with her, and uh, I, I wish Yarina something, uh, Karina something is the girl I think I disagree lady's name. So she basically the whole video was about the links. I mean, not even six degrees of separation. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No, I mean they are close, and and. My the only thing when I'm thinking just on the top of my head is that. Oh, and also, also, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Also, okay. because Virginia Roberts, there's, and this is all over the world, the articles. Virginia Roberts 
lawyer wanted to cite Meghan Markle as a witness because, and they said she had intimate knowledge because she had been around Andrew. She would have seen things. I can, I can definitely. Have, did you read it. that article? No, I haven't. I haven't read the the article, but I, I this is how I can get her to Andrew. Okay, I I can't make the next step without like looking at it, but I can get her to Andrew because Andrew and Soho House are like entwined, right? Andrew was a very frequent visitor to Soho House. Meghan Markle used Soho House as her base. Meghan Markle was, um, you know, hanging out with the the the, the procurer for the Soho House and stuff like that. So I can easily do that. My my issue becomes at some point is that knowing as much as I've investigated and looked into Meghan Markle, she hasn't spent that much time in New York. And oh, Meghan, like like in in no, I mean now yes, but I'm talking about when no no, Epstein... no before she spent a lot of time in New York. Oof, there is even pictures of her in 2013. Oh, that's no, someone I, I got think that. We're... No, I'm talking about like 2007, eight. When you're talking about the, you know, when Epstein, because Epstein, you know, was using New York and then he, you know, used Florida more as a base. And I'm just I'm trying to put it together in my mind and what Megan was doing at that time. And I feel like just off the top of my head, I can get I've got Megan and Andrew together all the time. Um, what was the connection other than the one woman? Do you remember? No, here, this is what the lawyer, I have it here, I have it here, it says, this is what Virginia drew for lawyers. She's somebody we can count on to tell the truth, Mr. Boyce said. He also believed that she might have picked up some important knowledge around the royals' behavior. He, he's talking about Andrew, right? Yeah. He said Miss Markle was a close companion to Prince Andrew and therefore probably saw what he did. The only way he would, she would have been able to see what Andrew did because he was always with Epstein. You know, when he was around Epstein, he also cited three reasons for Miss Markle to be a potential deposition subject. One, she's in the U.S., so we have jurisdiction over her. Two, she is somebody who obviously, at least for a period of time, was a close associate of Prince Andrew and hence, hence is in a position to perhaps have seen what he did. Let's not forget what Virginia was accusing him of. No, 100%. And perhaps, uh, no. if not to have seen what he did, to have heard people talk about it because of her past association with him, she may very well have important knowledge and will certainly have some knowledge. Three, she's somebody we can who we can count on to tell the truth. That he got wrong. <laughs> um, I 100%, 1,000%, million percent think that Megan and Andrew um, have Hooked crossed up. paths numerous times perhaps have hooked up, but definitely have crossed paths numerous times. There's Megan is too close of a friends with Marcus Anderson. Okay. I mean, just everything, right. It just, that is where Megan, you know, went to try and climb the ladder. So I have no doubts. And Prince Andrew used to go to Soho house, Soho house all the time. So I have no doubts. My, the only thing that I would have to like dig into more is that, I'm I'm trying to figure out. Don't forget that Andrew stayed at with Jeffrey every time he went. No, to I know New he York. did. I, I know he did. But we also, because of all the depositions that we've had taken of a lot of um, Epstein's victims and things like that, I, I've read them all. I've talked about them. I've read them. I've never seen her name come up in a deposition related to Epstein. You know, even in Virginia's, the Sarah Kellens or whatever, I've never seen her name come up. Now. I would now we've never had Prince Andrew deposed and I would like to, you know, wonder about that. You know, we had Tom Bauer or whatever talk about Andrew and Megan. I, I just I don't know if we've ever had. I don't remember that that Tom Maybe Bauer ever said about Megan and Epstein. I think she was too much of a nobody. Maybe he maybe she he wasn't her type, but she was around that environment. You know, she's this around that environment. I mean, everybody like you look, I can put Megan with Weinstein. I can put Megan with Andrew. Um, Tom Bowers put Megan with Andrew. I don't remember that Tom Bauer ever put Megan with Epstein. See, that that's the thing. I can't, I can't, at least in my research and at least off the top of my head, I, I can't figure out how that kind of happened. She would be the right age, um, honestly, um, if you're looking at, oh, she'd actually still be. And she's been old. to Florida. <laughs> she's been to Florida. 
Um, like I said, I, I, I can see her with Andrew and I've always thought about that. The first time that Harry brought Megan to meet Andrew, what his reaction on his face would have been, um, that kind of, you know, um, and she certainly was working the, um, the Soho house in London very, very hard. And I, yeah, you know, people said it, that they didn't understand where she got the money to fly first class all over the place when she was working at suits because she wasn't, she, she wasn't the main character. She wasn't getting paid $50,000 per episode. Like people thought she was, um, uh, but um, yeah, and did, they didn't understand how she was always flying to these places, first class, you know, like and, and Middle East and stuff like that. And nobody got it. I have talked about Megan and So House and Megan being a yachter. And if you look at, if you go back and just look at some of the depositions from um, like the people that were Epstein victims, he would often fly them places. Um, except for let's, let's, let's just talk about it for a second. So if they went to, let's say, um, the Virgin islands with him or whatever, they would fly on his jet and stuff. Um, if they were flying, let's say he was paying for them to go home for a couple of weeks or something. They, they never flew first class in that kind of situation. If you look at the depositions, whenever they would fly first class, they would always be, yeah, you know, I got this assignment and I was, you know, they paid first class and stuff like that. Um, Epstein would pay people to go back. But if you look, you know, he often promised people money and stuff. And he was very, very, he'd give like, oh, here's a couple of hundred bucks. Here's 300 bucks. He didn't, he wasn't shelling out for first class. The people that were shelling out for first class were who they would go to meet. So like if Megan went to go meet somebody first class or whatever, it wasn't like Epstein paying for it. It was somebody else who wanted to spend a week with her or a weekend with her or something like that when she was yachting. And I, I have no doubts that, those things were were brokered by you know Marcus and some other people. So I, I just like I said, I can get her to a lot of people in my head. I honestly also don't think that um, Epstein was used to paying people two and three hundred dollars. Right? He wasn't used to. I think that Megan charged more than that. <laughs> I think that honestly, I, oh, I just you think so. You think so? Remember, she was a nobody. She was a nobody, but I still think that when she she might have, when she was in LA, just on her own, maybe lower kind of, oh, I'll just take you to dinner or here's some, you know, taxi money or whatever. Here's a few hundred dollars to, to help you kind of thing. And then, you know, when she hooks up with Marcus Anderson and all the Soho house people, that takes her into a whole different kind of ball game. And if you can say to somebody, oh, you're going to get to sleep with somebody who was on deal or no deal, you know, one of the briefcase models you know, you're going to pay more than Epstein was willing to pay. And honestly, you're going to pay more than what Andrew was probably willing to pay. I'm not saying that she and Andrew didn't hook up or whatever, because that would have well, been look, a dream to hook up with friend, somebody with royalty. And Andrew Frank right. got $10,000. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I think that Megan was probably first class and like 25000 for the weekend or 10000 for the weekend or something. Epstein wasn't going to pay that. Epstein had too many people that he could pay two or three hundred dollars to. I and think that, pretty. yeah, much younger. Because if you think about the math and how old Megan is, if you even go back to like two thousand six and two thousand five, you know she's still kind of older than than what he was really going for. So, yeah, but um, that is first, I, I really do think that he used these women to blackmail other men. You know, so I don't know, but oh, hundred percent. We could talk about Norway. You know, and. <laughs> And the, the crown prince, where where did uh, the, uh, what's her title? What's the crown prince's? Mette Marit, Mette Marit, uh, the pr crown prince. She's not the crown prince. As Hokon is the crown prince, but Mette Marit is married to him, to Hokon. Yeah, so that's the one, you know, obviously Epstein put her there. So, um, you know, put them together. And, you know. She even I apologized in order to be able to marry him. And you know what? I remember when he finally was arrested and she issued an apology. Did you ever find, I was so insulted. How she apologized that she didn't know he was that much of a PEDO. I'm like, she oh, knew sorry. exactly all that stuff. But, yeah, but she had to issue an apology because when he finally went to jail for the second time, it was a huge scandal because he had been to Oscar a, a month or so prior, her, their private residence. Yeah. Uh, 
And, no, and so she, she issued a statement saying, oh, we're, I'm very sorry, I regret my association with Mr. Epstein because we knew he had, he, you know, he had been convicted, but we didn't think it was that, that bad kind of thing. Oh my God. I, I think that all of these, the women that ended up marrying, like in that case, you know, royalty and, and others that, that married very, very high, I think 100%, he got them to to be with these men so he would have favor he could blackmail he could you know get whatever two three passports whatever he needed and i i just i i can't i can't figure out i he, he could have used megan in that kind of situation where he's trying to set her up and to be with somebody who is rich and powerful um and the thing is he didn't always sleep with those women right he would just befriend them and say, I'm going to introduce you to somebody wealthy and powerful. Can you can, you know, whatever you can make of it, do it. But just remember who you owe for this favor yeah. kind of thing. Um, so I could see in that situation, but I, I can't. I don't see like Megan actually sleeping with Epstein, but I no, no, no. See... Kirby didn't say she slept okay, with him. She okay. said that, no, no, no. She said that the people were there, that she definitely was on that boat. But it's just that people weren't taking pictures back then, you know, and Meghan Markle That's was true. really, really a nobody, you know, like before you really had to rely like the, the people, you know, because the selfie culture exploded in this past few years. People think it's been around forever, but it hasn't. And she said that, no, she didn't mean it that she was with him in that sense, but that she definitely was one of his girls. You know what I mean? And, and then she said, and then she gave all the people and she said, and then she said, um, there's absolutely no way if this woman was around this, especially Karina, I think her name is some sort of Hungarian or something like that. Um, and she said, and she's with her on the yacht. There is no way that this woman is hanging around these very same people and not be part of that environment. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that you could definitely, um, oh, like I said, if in that kind of situation where, you know, he was trying and there was there's several examples of women that he put together with very, very powerful Successful people. Man. Yeah. Um, so with very good success, by the way, too. So she could have been like somebody's like, oh, I can put, you know, her with somebody and, and all of that kind of stuff. So I could see her being in that sense, you know, somebody that. Um, through Marcus and through Andrew, well, we can probably put Megan with somebody. And I, I, you know, I wonder if Epstein would go, God, we caught her with Prince Harry that, you know, but that wasn't Epstein's doing that. That was Marcus's doing. Yeah, that was Marcus. And just <clears throat> to, before you go, what do you think? And this is one, that thing, because she had Jake Rosenberg now, apparently there's the rumors that she had hired Jake Rosenberg, a former lover to take pictures. She flew him to California to take pictures of her and the kids. Wow. What have you heard no. about that? <laughs> I mean, if she did, it would be to make um, uh, Harry jealous. I mean, that's the only thing I can think about. Um, I, I mean, that he did he did come to California. Um, she flew him. It's, it's been yeah. it's been reported by by Richard Eden. He said yeah. that she hired him to take pictures of her and the kids, not Harry. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's because uh, Jake used to take photos of her. Um, Back the things was... on his Instagram, Andy, yeah. they're not normal because he didn't talk because I went through his whole Instagram thing and looking at beautiful girls. But with her was hashtag good times, beautiful. What are you up to? And like he repeated the same picture over and over in his Instagram account with really sexy messages. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I know that he has taken I, it had to be a couple years before she got together with Harry. I know that she had her birthday with Jake. since 2014. He's been taking pictures of her okay. naked and stuff like that because he posted yeah. it on his Instagram. Yeah, because I I remember like um they spent her birthday together in 2014 or 2015, something like that. 2014. So, okay, it was a 2014. I couldn't remember, but I know that um he definitely has some kind of relationship. And if she's flying him in, but here's the thing. I, I, like I said, I think it would just to to make Harry jealous. I'm not sure that she would get together with Jake. That's not where she's headed next, right? She she would like a billionaire, and and is it true about this Rothschild thing that he's behind her American Riviera or Chad the guy that's dating uh, Angelina Jolie? Well, they're not dating. I think both Angelina and Megan have been really competing for this guy's attention and a, really? and money to you know for projects and stuff like that. Um, and it's interesting. 
he is good looking, right? <laughs> So I think that, you know, and that's way better than like, you know, the old guy that everybody thought that Megan was, was, you know, hanging out with or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think that this Rothschild guy is, is subjected to a lot of attention, not just from Megan and Angelina, but others too, um, because he is actually, you know, good looking and well, rich. What is it behind it that because now it's saying that he's the one financing her I American that, <clears throat> orchard thing. Because I think that here, here is my theory: is that Harry stopped paying for stuff, right? Which is why we didn't see things in People magazine. We didn't see stuff because I've said it before. You know, with you, I've said it before in a royal mess. Megan doesn't have much money, you guys. Megan doesn't have that much money. She hasn't signed very many individual deals. This is her now, right? This is all her individual American Riviera Orchard. It's all about Megan. Um, everything that we're seeing lately is all about Megan on her own, trying to make her own money because she can't break free. She can't go do what she wants to do as long as she's relying on Harry's money. And once she disappears from Harry, then she's not going to have any money of whatever, because inheritance is not community property. Okay. So repeat inheritance is not community property. And the vast majority of Harry's income and wealth is from inheritance. inheritance. So um, she needs to make her own. And all of a sudden she's hanging out with the Rothschild guy. And then she goes, look, I've got this idea or whatever. And it, it probably only costs the guy a couple of hundred thousand dollars, maybe like even three or $400,000. It's not a huge amount of money. And, you know, he gets the attention from Meghan Markle and stuff. Angelina was asking him to help finance movies. And so that's many, many millions of dollars, More, right? Yeah. So, so that's, yeah, that's all he, totally... he's, he's going to get a success return with Angelina because she's got good eye for things and she's an A-lister. Right. But I think what Megan was hoping for is if you look at like Skims, Kim Kardashian is a co-founder of Skims, right? It's 50-50. Oh. Okay. Really? With this other guy. Yeah. It's 50-50. Um, and I can't remember the oh, guy's yeah, name. That's what they were talking about. That the guy from Skims is now Megan Markle's stylist or something like that too. Well, not her stylist, but like a, a guy that she wants to, to partner with, but it's 50, 50. And, you know, so Kim has made a ton of money or whatever. And this guy had to put up very little money because of Kim could sell stuff, right? Yeah. He puts up the money, they come up with the idea and, you know, and boom, Kim is a great marketer and stuff like that. Meghan Markle is not a great marketer, but I think that she said, look, we could have this kind of situation kind of like Skims and you just put in a few hundred thousand dollars and you can make tens upon tens of millions of dollars. But Skims is a very unique product, right? And lifestyle stuff like aprons and cookbooks and stuff like that is not unique. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think before for, to let you go? Because I know you have limited time. Where when where do you see this going with Meghan Markle? Do you, uh, one of the things that now that you brought up that Harry has stopped paying for stuff, is that why there was so much tension? And and you think that they were barely looking at each other? And now that he's putting up some money, that how loved up she is with him? Do you think that's part of it? I don't think Harry's putting up the money. I think that the Rothschild guy is putting up the money. I think that uh, because unless Megan convinced Harry to say, okay, look, you know, I need to make money on my own. I want to feel like I'm doing something. And, you know, it's great that we did the foundation stuff and, you know, and the deal that they signed with Spotify, the deal that they signed with Netflix, whatever, that's joint. Okay, fine. But Spotify didn't pay them as much as everybody thinks that they did. Netflix hasn't paid them. You know, those are just numbers for headlines, right? That's not actual dollars. And then if you divide it by two and you throw in your taxes and don't forget at that time, they had a lot more employees and stuff and agents and managers and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a fine amount of money for, you know, you or me or whatever, but, yeah. it, but for her and, you know, her private jet kind of lifestyle and stuff, it's not enough. She wants Kim Kardashian money. She wants to be a Kim Kardashian where she makes a billion dollars on her own and people look at her and say, Oh my gosh, she is a model of what we want an entrepreneur to be. Look how, you know, she started off with suits and, and she, and then she'll have the story where, you know, I wanted to do something on my own. And so I said, you know, Harry, I'm going to just kind of do this on my own. I'm going to find the right contacts and stuff. And so then she can say that she's a success story and that she didn't have to use the Royal title to make any money that she did it. But she's on her using own. the Royal title, American Riviera. Yes. Orchard, yes. By... <laughs> yes. And she is, and, but that's not the story that she's going to spin five years from now. <laughs> and, you know, before when you mentioned that uh, Meghan Markle uh, PR is expensive, right? And she has to pay people. Where is Ari Emanuel in all of this? Because you said that that 
she she he wouldn't want her to do something like what she's doing right now. Where, where do you think that is to close up this chat? Because I don't see him anywhere. Here's what I think. Okay, because you're right. He wouldn't want her to go back to the TIG. You know, that's not what he wants. He wants her for Dior. He wants her for something like that. But yes. but if you make this spin where you say Netflix is interested in having, you know, all these programs with her, like cooking programs and lifestyle programs and things like that, then all of a sudden it becomes more classy, right? It's not goop selling like, you know, vagina scented candles or anything like that, right? It's 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 something else. And it's it seems like it's more classy. And I think that that's what they that's why you're seeing the spin about, oh, Netflix is going to air all these shows and stuff. And are they though? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's not their kind of thing. Look, there are some great chef shows on Netflix, but they're deaf. But they are things where it's a list chefs or it's unique ideas. Like, let's follow, um, you know, the great chefs of the world. Let's go deep into their restaurants. Let's look at them. Let's see yeah, how they are as human beings. Star chefs. Right. And the only thing that I can think that's even close to it, and it's one of my favorite shows on Netflix is, um, I mean, they have like the cooking shows and the baking shows and stuff like in the holidays, but that's not it's different. But, you know, there's a show called Chef, actually. Um, yeah, on Netflix. And it's with John Favreau and um, Roy Kogi, who, you know, were in the Chef movie and stuff. And it's basically them going around the country and cooking and stuff like that. But here's the thing that separates it. First of all, John Favreau, even though he's, you know, an actor and a director and, you know, an A plus list director and, you know, an A minus list actor, you can tell when you watch it that this guy cooks at his house every single day, yeah. every single meal, that he spends time thinking about it and all this kind of stuff. And he's doing it with a professional chef. And he's very, very humble in front of the chef and other chefs. And he's like, Look, even though I might cook every single day at home, I know nothing compared to you guys. Um, and I want to learn. I want to absorb. You and... never hear that from Megan. <laughs> exactly. And but it works that way. And so then they actually had an episode with Gwyneth Paltrow. They've had episodes with other people oh, like an Avengers know, which and stuff show like you're that. you're talking about. Ah, I know that. Yeah, that's a good one. I remember that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And so, but you when you watch it, you go. Okay. And then like Roy Kogi, he's not arrogant or anything. He's like, you know, I cook simple food and here's my story. And it's, you know, humble and humble beginnings and stuff. And it's just, I think that Megan's idea is more of a Martha Stewart kind of show, which is fine, except for the fact that Martha Stewart actually knows how to cook. Martha Stewart actually knows how to decorate. Martha, she's Stewart, Martha Stewart. She's Martha yes, fucking Stewart. Exactly. So I, that just, Megan does not, that's not in her resume. That's not in her repertoire. It's just not, it's just, it would be her acting, you know, performatively as a cook, as some kind of expert on this in which she is not. Hmm. Well, thanks for letting us know everything. And, you know, thanks for, for everything that you've told me today. And I hope you can, you can be free soon to join us on the Royal Mess because you're sure as hell are missed, you know. I will and, be uh, there a week from Friday. I will be That's there a week. I'll tell Ron. Will he see this? And I'll tell him, by the way, that he will be so envious, which I, I love it. <laughs> but thanks very much for being here, Enthi. Thanks very much. And I'm, I'm going to leave all your links so people can see, can go to your channel. Please subscribe. By the way, you're not very active on YouTube, are you? You know, I just, and Ron gives me a hard time about that too. You know, it's just, I've got so much to do that I, I really, YouTube always falls behind because I try and podcast twice a day, every day almost, so. Yeah, well, I'm going to put all your channels anyway. So please, please go to his Patreon, uh, in his Patreon account. And please, please follow him, show him some love. And thank you very much for being here.